Hey, what's up YouTube? Jeremiah Hersey here. Welcome back to the next PL300 test prep question. Today we're gonna to be talking about parameters. And so as we talk about parameters, it's good to get an understanding of what a parameter does inside of Power BI. We're gonna start off in an Excel spreadsheet just so you have an idea of the data that I'm working with. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we are in an Excel spreadsheet and you can see here that I have just the numbers one through six here, and this is on a page called development. I also have a page called test and production as well. And these are just ascending numbers here on test, it's seven through 12, and on production, it's 13 through 18. So the idea is that I want to use a parameter to bring in my data from the spreadsheet and I wanna use the parameter to essentially select the sheet that I wanna use, and then we're gonna bring that into our Power BI desktop through the Power Query Editor. So here I am inside the Power Query Editor, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to connect to that Excel spreadsheet. So I'm just gonna go up here to New Source and select Excel, and I'm gonna choose my file. Now when the UI opens up the navigator, it's going to ask me which sheet I'm going to select. And so I'm just gonna start here with my development sheet. I'm just gonna select it. You can see the numbers one through six here. If I select production or test, you can see the associated information on each sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay and bring that in. And I'm gonna rename this because I'm gonna be using a parameter. I'm gonna rename this to data. So this is my starting data point. And so I want you to kind of think of this as if we were connecting to any source, how would we bring in data that's maybe in development or maybe in UAT? And so in order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and create a parameter that allows us to change the data that we're looking at. And so to do that, I'm gonna go up here to my home tab and I'm gonna select the manage parameters. Now there's several ways to create a parameter. I'm gonna show you the UI way to create a parameter for your data. So a parameter, think of it kind of like a variable in a math formula so you can change that variable to bring in different information. So I'm gonna go up here to manage parameters and I'm gonna create a new parameter. Now when the UI pops up, it allows you to specify the values that you wanna use. And I'm going to call this stage. So we have three different stages, development, testing, and production. And then we can select the type here. So this is your data type. So notice I can select decimal number or date time. Because I'm going to be using the name of the different sheets here, I'm gonna be selecting the text option. I'm gonna choose text. And then we can have suggested values. I can choose any value or a list of values here. I'm gonna choose a list of values and that's gonna give me the available option to put in the values that I want to use. And so the first one here is gonna be development. This could also work for a URL as well. And I'm going to choose testing. And the last one is gonna be production. So this is essentially gonna allow me to change the different sheets that this particular file is pointing to. Then it's gonna ask me to choose a default value. I'm gonna choose development. You can choose whatever you want. And the current value as well, I'm gonna choose development. So we're gonna start with that development data as we saw here, the numbers one through six. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Now that the parameter is created, we can see here that I have my current stage is development and the current value is development as well. If I click the drop down here, we're gonna see that I have the three different stages available, development, testing, and production. So in order to make this work, we're gonna go into our data query and I'm gonna go inside the advanced editor here at the top. This is where 
you're going to change the way that your query is run. And so if you'll notice here that currently it's selecting the development sheet. Okay, notice that the kind here is a sheet, but this is going to allow us to change the way that this parameter looks for our data. So instead of just hard coding this development sheet, I'm going to put in the parameter that we just created. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change development. So instead of pointing directly to the development sheet, I'm going to select my parameter and we called it stage. So notice here I have my stage parameter. So I'm going to go ahead and select the stage parameter here. And we have now inserted the parameter into the query. So what this allows us to do now, once we click done, is to change the parameter and it's going to change the data. So I'm going to go over here to my parameter. Right now the stage is development and I can now change it to my testing sheet. But notice that it doesn't work. So the reason that it's not working here is if we look back at our Excel spreadsheet, this is not called testing, this is called test. And so the problem now in lies in the naming convention. So your naming convention has to be exact. It's not going to be able to determine it if the name is incorrect. And so if I go back here to my production, so if I change this to production, notice that it's going to work. I'm going to select data and notice that I now get 13 through 18. So I need to modify the testing to change the name here. So I'm going to go to manage parameters. And instead of testing, I'm going to change this to the correct name, which is test. And go ahead and click OK. Once I change that, I can now look at the data under the test page. Notice that I do not get an error. I can now see 7 through 12. If I change the parameter to production, I'm going to see the production data 13 through 18 or if I change it back to development, I can see that data as well. So the naming convention is extremely important when you're creating parameters. It has to be exact in order for this to work. So let's go ahead and take a look at our test prep question. It says you have a Azure SQL database shown in the following table. And so that we can see that it has several different stages here. The first one is dev, then testing or UAT and production as well. We can see that the site URL has different prefixes here. One is dev, one is UAT, and one is prod. It says that you plan to build a single PBIX file to meet the following requirements. The data must be consumed from the database that corresponds to each stage of the development lifecycle. Power BI deployment pipelines must not be used. The solution must minimize administration effort what should you do? So as we think about what the important pieces are here that we're going to need to be able to point to the different stages of the development life cycle. So first we want to start with dev and then we'll go to UAT and then production. And so as we saw in the example that we don't have to create multiple parameters in order to make this work. We can simply create one parameter and change the value. That's the purpose of a parameter to change the value of what we're looking at. And so the first correct answer is going to be one parameter. So we can just create one parameter here that's going to be appropriate for our solution. So as we think about what is going to be the parameter? Well, how do we access our data? We're going to access our data through this server URL. And so what we want to do is replace these beginning pieces here. So we want to switch out the word dev for UAT and for prod, and that's going to point to the different server URLs and bring back the different data that we want to look at. And so as we think about what is that data type here, well, that's going to be a text data type. So the correct answer would be text data type for this question. I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you in the next one.